Good morning, all of you, and let's try this beautiful problem on binomial theorem. It's very rare to find good questions on binomial theorem, and here is the one which I created almost in the same or similar spirit as of J Advanced 2024. But I feel like this problem is a little bit more challenging and engaging, and you'll definitely enjoy this. If you have not liked and subscribed my channel, please do it so that you can get quality content for free. So here we go, and let. 2 plus root 2 to the power n is n plus root 2 b n where a and b n is from the set of integers clearly they are going to be positive integers and it has to be unique because of root 2 b n irrational numbers right so the first option is about limit and tends to infinity n by b n second and third option is quite connected and they talk about relating their generation with their previous generations a kind of recursion option d talks about order of magnitude of 2025 a 2025 well, either I can start with option B and C at the first go, or we can directly start with option A. So it feels uh, difficult directly to hit option A because if we know A and B and explicitly as a function of n, then probably it will be a good idea to find the limit. But if you blindly start working with the binomial theorem over here, which is not that difficult, but still because of the coefficients, it feels crazy because to handle that expressions nc0 nc1 and then taking limit and tends to infinity uh, will probably not be so elegant but of course nevertheless you can do with that as well so here i am going to take a very nice approach with almost no calculation for the first part since 2 plus root 2 n is a n plus root 2 v n so we know if i'll expand this in a binomial way binomial fashion so i'm gonna get 2 to the power n plus nc1 2 raised to power n minus 1 root 2 plus nc2 2 raised to power n minus 2 root 2 whole square and so on so forth and we'll have last term ncn which is 1 root 2 to the power n and remaining will be 0 so if we collect the terms we know we have terms like root 2 with every odd power so nc1 nc3 this will give root 2 and if i'll correct the remaining terms because of root 2a squared goes to 2. So I'm getting a feel that I'm going to get some hash plus root 2 times a star, where hash and a star is both from the world of integers. So with that motivation, I'm tempted to bring 2 minus root 2 to the power n into picture, which is his conjugate brother. And that helps us uh, to write the expression in terms of a star and hash as well, because now everywhere we'll have expansion 2 raised to power 1 plus nc1 2 raised to power n minus 1 times minus root 2 so basically i'm writing 2 plus minus root 2 to the power n so everywhere root 2 is just replaced with minus root 2 and we go exactly in the similar way minus root 2 whole square and so on from this expression is quite clear like the terms to the power n the even terms is still the same because of negative square so we are having exactly has minus root 2 times a star which means if the first expression was written as a n plus root 2 b n then if i consider this expansion of 2 minus root 2 to the power n it's going to be a n minus root 2 b n and that's a good news because now we know a n minus root 2 times b n equals 2 minus root 2 to the power n right and we have a n plus root 2 times b n equals 2 plus root 2 to the power n and using this both relation we can easily find the value of a n and b n as well so if i'll add them to a n equals 2 minus root 2 to the power n plus 2 plus root 2 to the power n divided by 2 so n is divided by 2 so that's a nice relation explicitly in terms of 2 plus root 2 and 2 minus root 2 exactly in the same fashion if i'll subtract both relation i'm gonna get 2 root 2 bn equals 2 plus root 2 to the power n minus 2 minus root 2 to the power n and that divided by 2 root 2 will give me 
bn as well right so now with this relation i can simply divide this expression so we have a n by p n and it goes to half divided by 2 root 2 will give root 2 times 2 plus root 2 to the power n plus 2 minus root 2 to the power n divided by plus 2 minus root 2 power n. since we know 2 minus root 2 let's say if i take a quantity like alpha and 2 plus root 2 as beta since alpha is less than 1 so alpha to the power n limit n tends to infinity will simply die and it will be 0 so if now i will take limit n tends to infinity on both side root 2 is constant so it will be out of limit so we have root 2 and i can divide with 2 plus root 2 to the power n so let's call if beta to the power n plus alpha to the power n by beta to the power n plus alpha to the power n limit n tends to infinity and that goes to root 2 beta by alpha beta by beta whole to the power n minus alpha by beta whole to the power n similarly we have beta by beta whole to the power n minus alpha by beta whole to the power n and when n is tending to infinity clearly this term dies so is this and we have exactly 1 by 1 over here please make sure like this is not tending 1 to the power infinity it's exact 1 to the power infinity because 2 plus root 2 by 2 plus root 2 exact 1 so hence the limit value is going to be root 2. so this was a beautiful way of solving this question a wrong way of probably doing this which will give you a correct answer so wrong way of getting correct answer is someone can directly take limit n tends to infinity at this step and i've seen many faculty also doing this limit n tends to infinity a n minus root 2 b n since n tends to infinity 2 minus root 2 to the power infinity will simply die so that will show a n by b n is root 2 from a rested forward okay of course limit n tends to infinity now it's legally this is wrong because uh when n tends to infinity a n and b n both is diverging because you can say when n is tending to infinity this quantity will go monotonically to infinity similarly this will go to infinity okay so right now what we are doing is when you are considering the limit uh, fundamentally what you are doing is is like separating the limit so i am doing limit n tends to infinity a n minus limit n tends to infinity root 2 b equal to 0 so limit of sum is sum of limit i'm using but we don't know whether this limit exists okay so the existence has to be shown if that is guaranteed then definitely this is allowed because then you can argue is like when n tends to infinity i'm not separating the limit whether i am just working with a n minus root to be an as a whole expression then it becomes legal once you show the existence okay so they they are very subtle point which you need to take care of now that also solves option d because now we know a n is going to be this expression so clearly a n will be greater than 2 plus root 2 to the power n divided by 2 right and now we know like root 2 is already more than 1 so a n is more than this quantity 2 plus root 2 to the power n by 2 because anyway this quantity is always positive for any n so any value of a n is going to be more than this and since we know root 2 will be more than 1 certainly so more than 2 plus 1 by 2 to the power n which is 3 by 2 to the power n right so which will be more than 3 to the power n by 2 because root 2 is more than 1 so hence a n will definitely be more than 3 to the power n by 2 so this window was a uh, too relaxed window and hence option d is also true so till now we have seen option a and d is true now we are left with option b and c so let's try and hunt for option b and c okay so b and c hunting now again the implicit hint is there uh, from the 
expression which is arc so basically we need to connect somehow a n minus 2 n minus 1 minus 2 b n minus 1 equal 0 to somehow we need to connect a n with this previous neighbor so with x a n minus 1 or a n plus 1 kind of a structure similarly b n has to be connected with this previous neighbor b n minus or b n plus 1 now how we are going to go about it so that's not very difficult because we can see the way to produce a n plus 1 or b n plus 1 is to multiply this given expression with 2 plus root 2 on both sides or the way to produce its lower generation is to divide it right and here both is allowed because none of the, none of the is, uh, values are 0 so I am going to multiply both sides so the given expression 2 plus root 2 power n equals a n plus root 2 v n let's multiply with 2 plus root 2 on both sides so that's amount to an plus root 2 b n times 2 plus root 2 which will give 2 n right plus 2 b n plus n root 2 plus 2 b n and by the very definition of this statement this is a n plus 1 plus root 2 b n plus 1 the way I am defining so this is our nice relation that we are getting now we know a n and b n is integers so clearly I can write a n plus 1 minus 2 n minus 2 b n plus root 2 times let's transfer everything on one side b n plus 1 minus 2 b n minus n equal to 0 now the only way it's possible because this quantity is integer so this belongs to some integer similarly this quantity is also belonging to integer so the only way the sum of irrational numbers because integer plus root root times integer is going to be rational and if it has to die the only way of it that has to be if and only if this is 0 and this is 0 so both integers should individually 0 and that will give a recurrence a n plus 1 equals 2 n plus 2 b n this will be true for all n belonging to z here i am taking positive z and b n plus 1 equals 2 b n plus a for the same restrictions otherwise it will be very difficult because if someone wants to individually find a 25 and a 24 value it's going to be extremely technical so now according to this relation just keep over here n equals 2024 so we'll get a 2025 is 2 times a 2024 plus 2 times b 2024 so that also gives option b as the correct answer what about the last option is b put n again as 2024 so we are going to get this expression as b 2025 is 2b2024 plus e2024 and let's check that yes so hence option c is also correct so this was a very beautiful problem where especially in the second part if you are not known to the well-known technique of these recursions it will be difficult because you'll be tempted to find separately 1825 and with that binomial theorems it will be extremely bad way of calculating this so i hope you are enjoying the lecture and it gives me pleasure that people are really taking benefit from these lectures and they are putting comment also and taking active participation in this i know the quality lectures on youtube is rare of course i'm not the only one who is doing this job but the point is to keep relevant questions which is within the framework of gk one syllabus or for isi cmi in this because there can be many problems of greater skill but i feel like just showing those problems to you unnecessarily uh, is not worth because right now you must inculcate your ideas or your passion for mathematics with the fundamental syllabus that is being given to you okay so let's try to do research work within the boundaries of the syllabus rather than just going out because if you go out there is unlimited con content available in the market 
okay so as a student you must know where to stop and what not to see so whoever is seeing whatever youtube channels or whatever book you are purchasing make sure like it's relevant for your jee preparation thank you have a good day